Chapter 1. Choice Without Limits What is the main difference between corporations and small giants? Unlike the former, smaller companies can avoid the scenario of mass expansion and engage in their unique entrepreneurial pathway. Sounds unrealistic? As Nelson Mandela once said, it always seems impossible until it's done. Owner and CEO of the Anchor Brewery, Fritz Maytag, led the company with a rich history. When its future was critically endangered, the entrepreneur made a game-changing decision. He narrowed the focus to one outstanding product and won. Then Maytag struggled because his beer was the best and everyone wanted it. So he decided to expand. Eventually, he realized that it was the craziest idea. Expansion was not what he wanted. He loved Anchor Brewery the way it was. But how do business people come to such pivotal solutions? And how do they draw the voices that whisper, go global, go global? How, after all, do they resist the temptation of becoming rich and famous? Some business people see the chance to turn away from the beaten track due to sudden enlightenment, while others have to take the wrong turn and get lost before finding themselves. The owner of an organic energy bars production company, Gary Erickson, realized that entering a new level was not his life dream. Maytag and Erickson were a few milliseconds from making the wrong decision. The brewery owner was about to release million-dollar stocks to the market. At the same time, the food manufacturer intended to sell the company. Before setting the deal, which unfortunately didn't happen, Erickson was devastated. The man had to experience a panic attack to realize that his desires mattered more than the commonly accepted idea of triumphant success. Keep in mind, some entrepreneurs have an inexplicable gut. In the most challenging moment, they grasp that going global means losing themselves and the secret ingredient of their success. This summary will help you discover the components of long-term entrepreneurial success. It turns out you don't need to dominate the world or consistently strengthen financial indicators. You'll also understand how the context and external factors affect business decisions and how to navigate a company independently. Chapter 2. The Formula of Success Indisputably, not every small business owner can boast impeccable savvy about what to do next. Many of them will most likely add insult to injury when exploring opportunities to develop. On the other hand, there are still many companies that will succeed. So let's see the characteristics that can bring the scenario into life. Small giants' founders are rebels. The market, investors, shareholders, and your know-it-all neighbor would probably push you to expand. Pressure is inevitable. Indeed, who doesn't want to be a billionaire? The great thing about being a business owner is that you and only you write the script. You can create, get disappointed, create again, and repeat the sequence. Eventually, such business will be soulful, real, and genuinely yours. Stick to the community. If you don't go global, you go local. You must commit to relationships with local people if you want to flourish. Appreciate your employees. A company's inner workings reflect its founders' values and goals. More importantly, how employers treat their teams always mirrors how they treat their clients. Promoting the ambiance of warmth and appreciation is an ultimately effective strategy. Dare to govern creatively. Small giants' leaders are like free artists, choosing the vector of business development and arranging the inner processes uniquely. There are no limits in management innovations, hybrid organizational structures, and thought-provoking diversification of services. Emotional connection to a business is key. In a small business, you cannot be an overly caring leader. Deep emotional engagement in all processes and solutions, whether a playlist in a cafe or material for construction, differentiates small giants from other companies. Remember, a small business gives a chance to slow down and usually follows the devil is in the details principle. Chapter 3. Success without expansion. Position yourself as an independent leader. Personal qualities and appropriate leadership strategies are by all means crucial. However, you won't succeed as a small giant until you demonstrate who's boss. Being resistant to external pressure is a starting point of entrepreneurial independence. By avoiding the going global scenario, an entrepreneur chooses to be a creator instead of a contractor. You should resist the pressure from the market. Otherwise, other people will dictate how to govern the company. When you are in charge, you have the freedom to separate the essential from the rest. Markedly, independence acquisition isn't a fish in a barrel. There's still a good chance that after positioning yourself as a leader, you'll need shareholder support if the selected business model requires extra investment. Gaining control doesn't protect from outside pressure, 
and it is very dangerous to underestimate this factor. The external impact can force disruptive and irreversible decisions. Once a leader, you see yourself boosting the company's size and eventually selling it to other people. That's what economies of business growth do. Keep in mind, being aware of your company's economic capacity is a must. When you can finance a company's development, there's no need to engage people from outside, and you can grow bit by bit. But wait a minute, why are the markets so impatient about business growth? Bo Burlingham sees the root of this problem in social, cultural, and entrepreneurial domains. Moreover, intuition is often the factor that drives entrepreneurs to get ahead of themselves. Society stimulates them to go global and fuels ego when they become more successful than yesterday. Eventually, the audience forces business owners to correspond to the public's expectations instead of following their professional orienteers. It's hard to fight off that pressure to achieve in the way that everybody thinks you should achieve and that they present as being easy to achieve. Of course, they don't know. It's never easy, and it's really a lot of work. Bo Burlingham Pressure doesn't necessarily emerge as a negative thing. Sometimes clients are in love with your services and need them in every neighborhood or city. It is, in a way, a confirmation that you've succeeded. However, small giants perceive success as a more subtle category. Did you know? According to statistics, almost 50% of small enterprises fail within a year. Chapter 4. The Location of Your Company. Why is it so important? Small giants are mostly companies operating locally, yet the specifics of their connection to the place exceed spatial characteristics. Most companies emerge in the right place at the right time, and their clients cannot think of alternative placement. The Mona Lisa principle thoroughly explains the pattern. The famous painting could be displayed in any museum in the world. However, the Louvre Museum, its unique vibe and technical condition make the image one of a kind. Such a tendency pertains to the small giants as well. The connection to the place is an attribute of business uniqueness. Corporations exemplify an opposite pattern. The larger the company, the more substantial it intends to generalize cultural codes and erase the distinctive features. Righteous Babe, a music company located in Buffalo, is a mini version of the city. It's hardworking, always underachieving, and still capable of touching your soul. Notably, fancy design or popularity among celebrities do not always drive such interconnectedness. Instead, these places or services are loved because of their charm, which often includes something far from an appealing and trouble-free history. Thus, a company starts mirroring the location's vibe after a while. People in charge of such businesses usually have well-developed intuition and a clear vision of their future. The responsibility pays off. Don't forget, symbiotic relationships nurture the wizardry typical for small giants. Business owners are the main magicians. They clearly see where to move. Some places can seem unattractive or weirder than others. However, many small giants would fail if it weren't for location. That implies one of the most exciting things about such non-evidently outstanding companies. You don't expect much when you first see them. However, when you interact with them, there's every chance to get the best experience of your life. Your first meeting with the place can remind you of a first date, and sometimes it can be like the rescue of a sinking ship. Anchor Brewing had seen a lot in its lifetime, from fires to financial crises. Fritz Maytag was one of its savers when he bought the place, and it returned the favor. Small giants touch you deeply. They are born, start to walk, and then change your neighborhood in an amazingly beneficial way. Sometimes they become those good clothes that open all doors. This goal may not be what they wanted initially, but the harmony of their development results in this outcome. Chapter 5. Promote Support and the Sense of Connectedness Imagine you've planned dinner in a niche but well-reviewed place. What would you expect? Delicious food? Yes. Unique philosophy? Probably. Good service? Most certainly. However, would you count on a restaurant owner's personal apology for a waitress accidentally spilling water on you? The owner of Tabla, Danny Meyer, demonstrates that such conduct is in the nature of things for small giants. However, proactive care is genuine and born at the moment, unlike fashionable places. It won't be a surprise to reveal that success starts small. Effective corporate culture requires engagement and a genuine sense of belonging of all the employees. Small giants are like open kitchens. When a client observes positive, healthy, and inspiring relations within the team, they will probably want to become a member. Moreover, involving employees of every department of your firm provides you with various organizational perks. Some of them are 
improved relationships between colleagues, increased empathy, a better understanding of responsibilities, and willingness to mutual assistance. Norm Brodsky's company, Cliff Bar, proves this tendency. A potential client once chose the company, among others, because he was impressed with smiling and communicable workers. As the businessman recalls, he had never observed such genuine satisfaction among employees. Remember, small giants are inseparable from the vibe of happiness and professional satisfaction. Significant revenue and fame of international scale do not guarantee the success of small but great businesses. Their humanity, empathy, and willingness to put themselves in clients' shoes allow companies to make a superb impression. Send a forgotten purse by mail? Easy. To think ahead and decorate a table for a couple's anniversary with flowers? Hold my beer. Present an extra dessert to visitors struggling to choose? Happy to do so. The client-oriented approach is in small giants' DNA, and that's what makes them a favorite. Manufacturing companies can face several challenges when working towards closeness with customers. Firms that sell services have less opportunity to interact with their audience directly. The manufacturer of Backup Alarm, ECCO, had its ups and downs. In a phase of unprecedented success, its executives took a risk and reinvented the company from one that sells high-quality goods to one that was also attached to customers. To be client-focused, such firms should reveal the pain and desires of their customers. Implementing this approach, ECCO significantly diversified the product line, implemented the latest technology, and aligned flawlessly with suppliers. Chapter 6. Small Giants Fail Too The success of small giants isn't permanent. There's no guarantee that after selecting an effective business strategy, something won't go wrong. The criteria for long-term success are different. Sustained growth margins protected by the business. Flawless balance sheet. A relevant business strategy that ensures correlation between providing clients with value and revenue acquisition. If at last one of these mechanisms stops, the crisis is inevitable. Lack of economic vision, neglect of sustaining culture, and poor retention can push the company back and negate its outstanding achievements. Some executives leave their positions because of age or other reasons, and there's no guarantee that the next leader would repeat their predecessor's success. Remember, most small giants fail because their leaders do not possess sufficient competence, aren't visionaries, or struggle to timely admit the mistake. Small giants fail because their owners neglect the value of adaptability. Rapid reaction to external transformations and crises is essential for every company that operates without outside financial support. You cannot survive without being sensitive to new tendencies and upcoming challenges. But circumstances change, industries change, technologies change, and what may once have been a sound business model can become unsound faster than anyone could have imagined. Bo Burlingham So can you save a business when it's on the edge of failure? Admit the problem. Correlate your strategy to the market realities. Is it still working? Don't be afraid to analyze the balance sheet. The sooner you reveal the problem, the better. Reinvent the business model. Count on your community. Those who support small giants in their best times will more likely be the strong shoulder during challenging times. Customers form an endless source of small giant support. When a crisis knocks at your door, the community will do its best to save the time necessary to transform. Conclusion Small giants are soulful. They often succeed due to some invisible matter. Sometimes they don't even recognize it when they possess an effective business quality. Small giants establish an emotional connection with clients pro bono. When the connection is blurred or lost, people become just business people. Small giants believe that close relationships are everything. Employees, clients, suppliers, shareholders, and members of local communities become family. It has traditions and expectations, failures and opportunities to improve. The exemplified companies are deeply saturated with the essence of the place they operate. The owners of small giants are not only interested in doing business, they are also curious and have a genuine passion for life. The leaders can be slightly naive. However, this real fragility will be the distinguishing factor that often attracts people. Small giants are not insured against failure. Once significantly successful, the company can lose its best leader or encounter unprecedented financial crises. Composure and a cold head are your best friends. Besides, the community is always willing to give their last shirt to help their favorite local business. Some entrepreneurs meet their clients in person and encourage them to visit a spot, while others use handwritten letters to communicate. Regardless of the path they select, companies transfer the client-business relationship from the commercial plane to the horizontal of friendship, or at least attachment. 
Magic and soul are the main components of Small Giant's continuous success. And so are the eagerness to learn, explore new destinations, and be faithful to proven patterns. Finally, it is impossible to build a small giant without absolutely loving your idea. Try this. Before making game-changing decisions about your business expansion, communicate with your employees and ask them questions about their long-term goals and what they love the most about working in the company. Explore your community, its challenges, and preferences. Find what you love about your business the most and stick to it in all operations.